Hey students, welcome back. This last week I gave you a pretty tough challenge in creating a password generator in Visual C++. Actually, only a few of you were able to complete the project successfully, and so I've decided to go back to this assignment and show you the examples from a few students um, that were done uh, correctly. So we have here three examples. The first one uh, is one that was um, completed successfully. It pretty much just does the basic password generator and uh, it can be used as a great model for how you should have completed the this assignment uh, originally. And so it doesn't have any extra features to it, it's just the basic password generator. Um, we see it open here. It allows you through the numeric up-down control to select the length of your password and it shouldn't be, allow you to go less than 7 or greater than 14. This one works great. So we'll make a seven or eight, let's say eight character password. Let's generate the password and it shows up down here. This is done exactly as it is supposed to be done. It works perfectly. Okay, so kudos to the student that turned this one in. And I can click on the quit button and the whole program quits. One thing, just uh, in case you didn't know, if you're looking at your program, you go into the debug folder. If you find, uh, when you find the uh, file that starts with the name of your project then ends in .exe that is the finished product and you can always open that one up as you see I've done here and run your program and that is the finished compiled project that you've completed and you can actually send that to someone give it to some, put it on a different computer if you want to run it and it is a standalone file that will run your project um, and allows you to test uh, of course it's only there if you've successfully built and debugged your program. That's uh, it's, it's created when you build the program and it will not be there if, it, if your program does not build successfully. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and leave this. Let's go back up and open the solution file that will allow me to uh, show you this project in its um, completed form as it was being created in Visual Studio. Okay, here we have the program open in Visual C++ Express and I'm going to go ahead and double click on the generate password button which is the button that controls uh, all the code. We see the code written here and this is a great example of a uh, program that works as as expected or as it's supposed to. Let's look at all the code here. Okay, We have a um, button click method and inside that we first the programmer created all the variables, which you usually want to do at the beginning of, the, of any program. He created a manage string variable called password. Remember, string has to be capitalized here. It won't work otherwise. It initially has the value of nothing. There's nothing inside those double quotes. Then he declares an integer called numcars, the number of characters. He gets that value from the numeric up-down control. He converts it into an integer by putting int inside parentheses there. He creates an integer rand number and a w car variable called rand car. Okay. Now he creates this random object using the method I showed you earlier. Okay. And then he goes into a loop. And that loop is controlled with this condition right here. It will only loop while the number of characters, which was um, set up here from the numeric up down control, it will loop while that number of characters is greater than zero. Okay, and then what he, this person does uh, is every time he runs the loop, he subtracts one from the number of characters, and so it'll continue to loop until it gets down to well one, which is uh, just greater than zero, and um, then the loop will end. Okay, right before it gets to zero. And that's exactly the number of times you want the loop to run. That's one way to do it. There are other ways to do it as well, but that works. Uh, then inside the loop, he creates a random number between 33 and 126. He takes that random number, converts it to a W car, and then he takes that rand character, okay, stores that character in this uh, rand car variable, and then he um, goes ahead and builds his password. The password equals the password plus the current random character and so each time the loop is run that password string gets longer with a new character added to it. Okay, And then at the end he just simply uh, takes that password and displays it in the text property of the password out 
text box. And again, where is that? This is called password out right here, which we can see right here. Password out is the name of this text box. Okay, and so this programmer says put that password in that password out uh, text property, and that's it. Okay, so you've now seen a uh, example of a password generator program that works great. And if you're having problems creating your password generator, I encourage you to write the code exactly as you see here and it will work. Okay, you have to make sure though that capitalized words are capitalized, um, that uh, semicolons are placed at the end of every line, uh, etc. That you have a loop that always has a um, a condition by which that loop will end. Okay, you have to uh, otherwise you'll get an infinite loop. And some of you had problems with infinite loops. We'll look at that in a moment too. How you can avoid that problem. Okay, on to the next example. Okay, here's a sample program from another student in our class. And this student had the problem. Um, got a lot of it right. Okay, they were close, but they had the problem that when they generate a password of a certain length, I had always generated the exact same character. As we can see here, so there's a bunch of M's, okay, and it doesn't matter. I, it, it does work that if I want to have a password length of 10, generate that password, but now I have 10 all of the same symbol, and that's not what I wanted, okay. Also, they tried to do something a little different to generate always a four digit password, but still, same problem. They're always getting the same four digits. So, how can we solve this problem? All right, let's take a look at the code by double clicking on this generate password button here. We can see their code for this particular. Um, this particular program. And everything's great here. They declare a counter variable, a password length, a string, managed string variable. They go into a loop and the loop works right. What it does, what they did with their loop is said while the counter is less than the password length. I think this is a really a preferred way of doing your loop. You have a counter set at zero and you have a password length set at whatever the person chose from their numeric up down control. And then you just say loop the loop for as long as that counter is less than the password length. Okay, that's the way I did it. I think that's a good way to do your loop. Every time inside the loop, of course, you have to increase counter by one, and this is how you do it. Some of you had that incorrect. You have to say counter plus equals one. And what that does is it takes the counter variable wherever it currently is and adds one to it. Okay, so the first time the loop runs, the counter is zero and it goes up by one, two, three, four, five, up to the height, uh, the length of the uh, password that you set up here and then it ends the loop. Okay, If you don't do something like that you can get an infinite loop which I told some of you had an infinite loop. That means that your loop never ends. Okay, It never gets to the point where this condition becomes false. And If that condition is never false the loop will never end and you'll be in an infinite loop. Okay, but that's not the problem with this one. This one works great that way. You have a loop that will keep going until the counter equals or is less than the password length. Um, but the problem here, and the reason why we keep getting the same uh, symbol or, or character over and over, is that this uh, random uh, object creator, where we create a new random object, is inside the loop, and you can't have that. So what you need to do is remove that and put it up here outside the loop. Otherwise, you're creating a new random object every time, and you're going to end up getting the exact same number. That might not seem to make sense, but that is the case. And so now, if we see if I move this up here, and we'll also need to do it. Uh, he had a second program down here for that four-character password. He did the same thing here. So let's take that out. I'm going to cut it and move it up here, um, there, and then um, go ahead and save and debug file. Save all and debug this program. Yes, build it. We will see now that my um, password generator uh, will work just fine. Okay, here's the exact same program open. We can see now, I choose a character, a password length of seven, generate the password. Ah, perfect. Now I'm getting a different character every time. And the reason for that error, again, is just simply you have to create the random object outside the loop. You can't do it inside the loop or else you'll get the same character every time. Okay, So I can change the number of password length, generate a new password, and it works just great. Okay, the last example I want to show you today is an advanced password generator. This was submitted by one of our students who did an excellent job on creating not only the basic password generator, but a more complex uh, application. And so let's go ahead and actually just run 
the uh, program again I can just find the exe file and run it and this will show you the finished product and how it works okay the like the thing I like about this one is that this person um, actually put in a option for creating an alphanumeric only password An alphanumeric password only means it only has letters and numbers but no special characters and uh, sometimes you can't use those types of passwords or characters in your password and so I can select that choose a password length of seven and go ahead and generate my password now we see that these passwords are all made up of only numbers and letters only but there are no special characters uh, like exclamation points etc perfect okay I unselect that and I generate different passwords now we see I have uh, special characters okay uh, equal symbol greater than symbol forward slash exclamation point etc how was this done let's take a look okay let's take a look at how uh, this young lady completed this project again with the advanced feature of the checkbox right here that says alphanumeric only double click on this button and open her code um, actually let's go back to the design view we see that this is a checkbox okay it's found in your basic um, list of common controls right here that's what she put on there and we have the alphanumeric up down or the um, numeric up down which we used before and we have a text box and a button and that's all that's on there that's a special item okay and um, this one here is just called checkbox one alphanumeric up down one and text box one okay let's take a look at the code we see that in the button click code what this person did like many of you did declared a counter variable a, a managed string a created the random object outside the loop and has that desired length variable set by the numeric up down but then what they did is they first they created that while loop that says while the counter is less than desired length then we go in and create a random number between 33 and 126 then we put an if statement in there and it says if checkbox one check state equals there's two equal statements there because that's not an assignment operator but an equal statement if that check state equals checked then we go through a series of nested if statements that basically tell us if the random number that was set up here is less than 48 well if it's less than 48 it's one of those special characters okay if it is then we use the continue statement what a continue statement does is it basically jumps out of these if statements okay and basically goes back to the beginning of the while loop and then creates or selects a different number from the random uh, list of numbers between 33 and 126 okay and then it choose, so it chooses another number and it'll continue doing that as long as the number chosen is not in these range of numbers in other words less than 48 greater than 122 or uh, also um, greater than 57 and this means and less than 65 so in other words between 57 and 65 or if that number is greater than 90 and less than 97 so between 90 and 97 those are all the special characters that are contained in our ASCII list uh, of numbers between 33 and 126 and so we see this person has cleverly used a series of nested if statements to eliminate the special characters and so the continue again what the continue does is it jumps out of these if statements and back up to the while loop up here and selects a different number and it'll just keep doing that until it chooses the right uh, number types of numbers okay and then it takes that random number once it selects one that's uh, appropriate turns it into a character using wcart then adds that character to the password okay and then increases the counter by one and then goes back to the loop and starts over again and it keeps doing that until you get a password that is the correct length then it jumps out of the loop okay this down here is the only statement outside the loop um, it only only after the loop is done does it uh, display that password in the text box one text property and that's it we have a perfectly designed uh, pro program that will uh, give you alphanumeric um, passwords that do not contain any special characters and um, you can see that code here this young lady did an excellent job so if you were able to create a um, 
password generator that was just a basic one, uh, but didn't include any uh, special uh, features like this, then I want you to go back and create uh, one that has special features like the alphanumeric only option. Uh, if you are a student who didn't even create the basic password generator, then I want you to um, create the basic one and then try to also add some of these other alphanumeric uh, options like you see in this password generator here. Great job to all of you guys that, that did a, were able to complete this project. I saw a lot of creative coding this week. Way to go.